What's going on? It's your boy Richie Vaughn. I'm the coach of the Colorado Cramorant in the CGC Draft League, and today I'm bringing you a new video. It's our matchup analysis for our Week Three opponent, Paint Seagull and the Sudbury Snovers. Um, I was saying how in last week's matchup analysis, I was prepared to face probably my worst matchup in the league. I did. I happened to do all right with that battle. Spoiler alert: If you haven't seen it yet, we managed to get a 2-0 win on that. This matchup, I actually feel really confident about. I think this is one of our best matchups in the league. However, Based on how my prediction went last time, maybe that means it's not going to go so well. Regardless, I'd like to take a look at her team and talk about what I plan to bring to counter it. One of her first picks was Entei. Actually, it might not. It was it might have been like her third or fourth. Um, Entei is pretty spooky. I'm not going to lie. It's a great fire type. It's going to be running inner focus because pressure is unavailable in this game. And inner focus is just great. I'm not running intimidate, but I do have two sources of fake out and neither of them will work against this thing. And just sacred fire. Just spamming sacred fire is really really scary it's gonna be hard to deal with it's pretty bulky it's just a pretty good mon sorry these are all at level 100 they should be at 50 oops well they're at 100 so that's fine um it gets moderate coverage it gets uh it doesn't get like rock side but it gets stone edge it gets some really interesting things extreme speed is kind of worrying and i have a prep for, uh, a plan for that um overall just an interesting mon and something that i really have to be concerned about him on top is one of the best uh, supports in the format, and I think this was her first pick. It's actually not that bad for my team. I think for a lot of teams, this thing is an absolute menace, but for my team, it's kind of fine. It has really good support options like wide guard and faint and fake out, but like it doesn't really concern me that much. I have a really good matchup into it. I have two psychic types. I have a flying type, and I just don't have a whole lot that's like weak to fighting. It just doesn't really bother me. It'll be annoying, but like I can just use Psychic on it once and it'll faint, you know. It could have the berry to resist or focus sash or something, but in general, I'm just not too worried about it. The same thing goes with Crobat, right? Um, just the fact that I have two very powerful Psychic types just kind of... I'm just not really super worried. Inner Focus means this thing's definitely setting Tailwind if it wants it. It's faster than everything on my team, but it doesn't really do much to me. The only thing it really threatens is like Meganium and Togekiss. And even with Togekiss, like there's ways around it. I can run a, an item that helps with it, perhaps. We'll have to get into that. Um, it's obviously a great support piece, and I'm not denying that, but again, just into my team, it doesn't seem that scary. Uh, Melodic's actually the mon I'm the most worried about, um, and I'm just kind of, I don't have great solutions for breaking through bulky waters. I have Magnezone. Magnezone's awesome, but they also have Entei, and Entei's really good into Magnezone, so you can see that, like, if Magnezone goes down, this thing's a problem for me. Um, I can just chip it down, more or less, but it's just really annoying. I'm kind of expecting Marvel scale so it can wall Glade, but competitive would be just as bad. Cute Charm would be really bad too. I brought this up before, and if my opponents are watching these, then maybe they'll notice it, but also I'm saying it now, so it's a weakness that I acknowledge and I'll try to prep for, is that um, a good portion of my team, like almost half of my team, is inclined to either always be male or be male most of the time. Latios and Glade are always male, Blastoise and Meganium are usually male, and then I think my best ratios are like a 50-50. Um, thankfully, Magnezone is genderless, so Magnezone doesn't have to worry about Q-Charm, but Q-Charm is legitimately annoying and something that my team actually is kind of weak to. Um, competitive could be annoying, maybe if I run Snarl or something. I don't expect to see competitive just because I don't have Intimidate, like it's not that likely it's going to be proc'd. I expect to see Marvel scale. Competitive could happen. Um, and I'm just, I'm worried. This is a tricky mon for me to deal with. It's just really bulky. It gets hypnosis. It gets support moves like that. It could just set up with coils. I think it gets coil in this game, right? It absolutely should. Yeah, it does. So, uh, it's problematic. We'll deal with it when we get there. Roserade is a great grass poison type, but again, with my psychics, I'm just not too worried about it. Latios just walls this thing perfectly. I mean, I know it gets dazzling gleam, but it's not going to be doing that much damage, I don't think. And I can just take it out with the things that aren't Latios. I can use Swellow, you know, I could use Houndoom. Like, it, its coverage as a grass poison type isn't that great, uh, besides the dazzling gleam. And it's just, I'm not worried. I don't know what to say. Um, Espeon's pretty cool. Espeon's a good mon. My magic bounce makes it so if it wants to do supportive things, you can't really stop it. If Paint really wants to do a, um, a Trick Room team here, then she can totally do that. I really can't deny it. Um, but that being said, it's pretty squishy, especially on the physical side. Its HP is pretty low. It has okay special defense. Uh, it's pretty strong. I have to respect it for sure, but like Houndoom, Blade, Latios, heck, even Togekiss, they all deal with this just fine. Honchkrow I am worried about because I've been saying that a lot of my solutions are with my psychic types and Honchkrow threatens them pretty bad. Um, yeah, I'm really worried like how I was with Absol with week two. I'm worried about Sucker Punch. Sucker Punch is just really annoying for me. I don't have a lot of ways around it. So I have to respect this for sure. This is probably the second scariest mod for me to deal with. 
time for the Mustelid Madness, so to speak. These two little ferret-like Pokemon. Um, Ferret's kind of a cool support. Frisk is a great ability. It's one of the best abilities in the format for sure. And you can definitely, well, I expect to see like a follow me set to allow something like Linoon to set up perhaps. Um, it's not very bulky and it's not going to be doing any damage really, but it gets good support options and Frisk is just amazing. Linoon, if it does come, I'm expecting to see Gluttony, Citrus Berry, Belly Drum, Extreme Speed. And it's just, it's just going to hit really hard. That's just kind of what Linoon does. Uh, Gluttony allows it to, um, or no, you wouldn't be Citrus Berry, it'd be like Ayapapa Berry or something. It would eat the Pinch Berry at half health after it used Belly Drum, after it was protected by Furret, and um, it would maximize its attack, and it would click Extreme Speed, and that's just a good set. I don't have any Ghost types. Uh, Magnezone resists it, but it's still going to be taking a chunk from a max attack uh, Extreme Speed that's boosted by its uh, same type attack bonus, so if Linoon comes, I'm expecting that set. That's a good set. Uh, I don't really know what else it does, honestly. Then there's Riolu. I honestly don't know what to think about Riolu. Uh, Paint started with Clefairy in the league, which is reasonable, but both these mons are pretty weakened compared to when they had Eevee Light. Um, but I don't, I just, like, I know it gets Prankster, but I just don't really know what Riolu, like, does. In Sword and Shield, it was kind of known for being a great coaching user, but, like, What's it gonna do? I, I don't really know. Um, Roar would be cool, but it's not Prankster boosted because it's negative priority, right? It could go for sub, but like, it's sub. Um, copycat, you can do cute things with, but I don't see how that really goes into my team at all. I guess Howl, right? I guess Howl Honchcrow is something I gotta worry about. That's pretty much it. Like, I, I don't really know what this thing does. I guess Screech is the thing. You can set weather if you want. Helping hand is always good. Double team is probably the scariest move on here for me personally. Swagger. Swagger is annoying too. Um, I guess it has options. It's just weird. I, I just don't really know what to expect from it. I don't expect to see it. If I had to pick a six to see, it would be Entei, Crobat, Melodic, Honchcrow. How many is that? Crobat, Melodic, Honchcrow. That's four. Lightning and Furret. That's probably the six I expect to see, honestly. Uh... That's pretty much my breakdown of Paint's team. Let's look into what I plan to bring. Here we are. This is the squad. I'm pretty confident in, in them. Again, this, I, this is my most confident matchup, in my opinion, for uh, out of all the matches I'm scheduled. Um, we're doing Latios with Culberberry. Again, one of the only things that really trends Latios is the Sucker Punch from Honchkrow. Culberberry means that we'll be able to take one. Um, Psychic and Thunderbolt. Psychic hits everything on the team for neutral, if not super effective, besides Espeon. And Thunderbolt hits most of the things that Psychic hits for neutral for super effective, including like Honchkrow and Melodic. So those are the only two moves I really need. Like, that's really it. It'd be nice to be running Life Orb, but I think we'll get more mileage out of Culverberry. Um, Tailwind, we need to match Crobat's Tailwind if they get it, and Protect, because it's Protect. We're finally bringing Toxicroak. I was a little torn on the item here, but I really suspect uh, Cobaberry is our choice here between Crobat and Honchkrow. I think... That will be the move that is being used on us, and I want to be able to survive one. Take out is just really good. Swords Dance, Poison Jab, Drain, Drain Punch. The idea is that I have Follow Me, Togekiss, allow Toxicroak to set up with Swords Dance, and then I can just Poison Jab and Drain Punch my way to victory, more or less. It's not super bulky, but like it's going to be doing big damage. The main reason why he's here, if I'm being honest, is for Melodic, because Dry Skin just kind of walls Melodic entirely. Is Melodic going to take a covered Psychic move? Does it get one? I don't... It doesn't. It doesn't get a psychic move. So, in fact, I think its special coverage in general is like not that great. It's like water and ice and dragon. I guess you're not we're not gonna see disarming voice. So, like it, with its main damaging water attacks, dry skin makes toxic croak completely immune. So that's why that's the main reason I'm bringing toxic croak is because I'm scared of melodic and toxic croak just walls it. So that's really cool. We're finally gonna take advantage of this dry skin ability. Very excited. Um, that doesn't make it extra weak to Entei, but we'll get to our solution on that in a minute. Um, we're bringing Togekiss with the Kebia Berry. You've probably never seen that before. That's the Poison Berry. Um, because between Crobat and Roserade, we're probably going to take a Poison Attack. So I just want to be able to eat it super well. Um, very bulky. My front office wanted me to take uh, Super Luck, and I probably should. But again, I'm scared of Melodic. This thing outspeeds Melodic, and I can try and flinch it a bunch. That's kind of my goal here. So I went with Serene Grace so I could get those extra flinches. I know it doesn't do anything on Dazzling Gleam. Maybe the Super Luck is better. I wouldn't be running Scope Lens anyway, so I don't know how much it really matters. I'm running Life Dew. Just might want to get some recovery here and there. Seems like a good idea um, for another reason that I'll get to later. This just seems like a good support for the team. It just tanks some stuff really well. It's really bulky. I don't know what to say. It's just a good mod. 
we're finally bringing Gutswellow. I think Gutswellow is excellent here. Uh, there was no point trying to catch up in speed to Crobat because it will always outspeed us. So I just got to the next lowest thing, which I think this is Espeon, I believe. Probably. Pretty sure this is Espeon. Um, facade does huge damage. There's no steel types. I don't think there's any resist for facade. There's not. Of course, like we could get intimidated, but again, I don't know if he, him on top even comes because it doesn't really do much in my team besides Swellow, and then Swellow kills it with a Brave Bird even if it's intimidated. So um, yeah, facade smacks every single thing here. Uh, Brave Bird, if I really want to do more damage to like hit on top or Rosa Raid or Riolu. Um, U-turn for positioning and Quick Guard. Quick Guard is huge. There's two sources of extreme speed. Um, Riolu has prankster moves that could be annoying, like Screech or something. I don't anticipate it, but like, who knows? It could happen. I want to have Quick Guard as an option. Um, and that's, yeah, that's really it. It's just the extreme speeds and Riolu shenanigans and Sucker Punch. Sorry, Sucker Punch for Latios. Um, I'm, I think this is a great set. I'm really excited to bring this. This is really, really cool. I wish I could afford Adamant. Can I? I feel like I should be able to. Okay, so we're at 179. Can we can we achieve that? No, we can't. Okay, so yeah, we're, we're running that for a reason for sure. Um I I kinda have to I mean I could sacrifice the Espeon speed tier, but Espeon can one-shot me with psychic, so I'm I'm gonna keep it. We're running Magnazone. Magnazone's the N MVP of the team. We might as well be the Colorado Magnazone, honestly. Uh we're doing Choice Scarf Sturdy our first week bringing sturdy i was bringing a substitute leftover set but my front office convinced me that choice scarf looks really good and i have to agree with them i think that's kind of the play here thunderbolt just hits everything they have no ground types um they don't have any electric types it just smacks the only resistance is roserade and what's roserade gonna do to magnazone nothing so just a good old timid choice scarf thunderbolt is probably what we're gonna be doing most of the time bolt switch if there's entei because we'll be able to chip it and get out of there and speaking of entei we're sturdy so I think the only Mon that can one-shot us here on that team is is going to be either Entei or like a setup Melodic. There's really nothing else that's going to be able to one-shot us. Maybe like a Honchko crit or something. And we have Sturdy, which is like a Focus Sash. So we basically have two items with our ability, which is kind of cool if you think about it, because there's no point in running Magnet Pull because there's no Steel types. And there's no point in running Analytic because we're Scarf. So this is just a really cool option that we have. This is another reason why I'm bringing Life Dew. I think that there's a pretty good chance that Magnezone just takes chip damage every now and then, and it could be cool to just top it off so it gets its sturdy back. So that's prob that's why I'm bringing Life Dew here. Um, Flash Cannon, I don't really even need. Discharge, if I if there's redirection shenanigans and I really have to hit the other target, I could go for a Protect or something. Um, and then, yeah, I just think this is a good set. And again, this is part of why I'm not worried about this matchup, because not only do I have this, like a Psychic type that's really threatening, but just Magnezone just like goes so hard. Last but not least is Houndoom. At first this was Blastoise, but I actually thought Blastoise got rocked like a little too hard by Roserade. So I decided to opt for Houndoom. That might be confusing because you don't think that they have a lot in common, but I, what I wanted was Entei Switchin. And I think Houndoom's a really good Entei Switchin because it has Flash Fire. It's immune to Sacred Fire. So if a Sacred Fire comes down to Magnezone, I can Volt Switch into Houndoom. Houndoom takes it, gets a stronger Flamethrower. I like Snarl here. Snarl will solve my Melodic problem if they're not competitive, so I'll just have to figure that out. I think it'll be really obvious if they're Marvel scale, and it should be pretty obvious if they are um, Cute Charm. Maybe not, though. We'll have to just wait and see. But Snarl will help with that. Flamethrower just hits most of the team, and if I'm really scared of Honchkrow or something, or if, he gets, or if Honchkrow gets set up, I can just click Will-O-Wisp. So... All in all, again, I'm not really worried about this matchup. It should go well, but <laughs> who knows what's going to happen, honestly. That's pretty much all I have. Uh, if you liked this analysis, please leave a like and subscribe. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Am I making a huge mistake? Should I be bringing Blast Choice? Am I throwing by not doing so? Let me know what you think. What would you have brought into this matchup? I'm pretty happy with this. I think it's going to go well. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you at the battle probably the day after this video goes live. We'll see you then.